to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We just returned from a pilgrimage to, uh, in the footsteps of St. Paul. We were in Greece. Uh, we went and we started in Philippi and went to Thessaloniki and Berea and Corinth. And we even made our way over to uh, Ephesus and Patmos, uh, Crete. It was just a very adventurous trip. But when you come back from about 11 days, uh, in buses and even on cruise ships, you really feel like you've followed in his, in his footsteps, you know, because he, he spent a lot of time on ships. Of course, he was not as fortunate as, as us because we didn't have a shipwreck. But we were exhausted after 10 or 12 days. But think about what Paul did. He walked those roads. And he would, he would come out of one town after being stoned and then being left for dead, get up, walk back into that same town, preach the gospel and get and go to the next town where he might get whipped with rods and uh, I'm just telling you guys, it's time for men to man up again. We need men to man up and be willing to pay the price, whatever that is, to share the gospel. And I think the very first price we need to pay is for men to spend time with the Lord every day. I always tell people, if you're not spending an hour every day with the Lord, you're a poser. In Hawaii, we have a lot of guys that walk around wearing T-shirts. You know, like They'll even wear shirts that say lifeguard on them. And they bought them at Abercrombie and Fitch. You know, they're not even lifeguards. We call them posers. Um, if you're not ready to go out in big waves, big water, you shouldn't be wearing a lifeguard shirt. But the same thing is, I think, in a lot of men's lives today. We don't, we have families, you know, that we care for, and we will focus on career, we'll focus on ambition, but we don't focus on the most essential thing, and that is to protect and provide for our families. And the most essential role for a man to do is uh, if you is to realize you're out in heavy surf. There's big waves all around you, and you need to be prepared for that. People ask me, what does it take to ride big waves? And I give them my 20-20-20 rule. You should be able to hold your breath, like in Hawaii, uh, at sunset. It takes 2 minutes and 20 seconds for that sun to set. And I, used to, I don't do it anymore, but I used to hold my breath through that whole sunset and pray. Um, uh, my son and I, Jeremiah, drove down 20 feet uh, carried boulders and ran underwater. And I remember that summer when we trained. The, within a few months of that, we, wouldn't, we didn't know that he was going to be surfing 85-foot surf on the North Shore. Um, and also, uh, we train. Uh, I tell people, if you can't lay on your surfboard and paddle for 20 miles, uh, like I did when I paddled the Molokai Channel uh, between the island of Molokai and Oahu, then don't go out in big surf. You, know, you have no business being out in big surf if you're not training for it. Well, the problem is, man, that you're out in big surf and you're not following the 20-20-20 rule of life. And that, to me, the 20-20-20 rule for a man is you spend 20 minutes in the morning before you get up, before you, I mean, before you get, leave the house in prayer. Uh, you know, you could do a rosary in 20 minutes. You can do mass in a little bit more time than that, the liturgy, the hours. But in total, you should be spending 60 minutes in total every day in prayer. And if you're not, you're a poser, and you're out in big surf, and you're going to face a real wipeout, and so will your family. So... We're challenging you men to man up and uh, spend that time with the Lord and it'll transform your life. Uh, we have a man like that with us today. We have, we have one of the, a man with us today who has one of the most difficult names <laughs> I've ever interviewed. I think it's T-Soak. Is I, to, I, T-Soak, right? T-Soak Rosales. You got it. Bear with a name like that, though. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's so good to have you on our show, T-Soak. Thanks, Bear. Thanks for um, having me. Instead of me explaining it, I know you are the director of advancement for two seminaries. Yes. Can you let us know about what your role is there in, in sure. St. Paul? Sure, sure, sure. Well, I, I and, and, and another gentleman have the, the distinct honor and pleasure for to be uh, served with the St. Paul Seminary, uh, which is a major seminary uh, here in St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, serving uh, almost almost 20 dioceses throughout, mostly the upper Midwest, but as far north as Alaska and uh, as far south as, as Alabama. Wow. Uh, and yeah, and it's a, like I say, 125 years old has has produced 3,000 priests in its day. Uh, a venerable Fulton Sheen walked through these halls. Uh, so that's really, one of I the mean, st- like, dude, I mean, yeah. So you have put your footsteps where he put his. <laughs> well, I think the building has changed a couple times, but yeah, I mean, he's no, you but know, in, I mean, that, yeah. I mean, like when I was when I was on my pilgrimage, I, I I got to step, and I know through there were three steps that he 
we know he yeah. stood on. I yeah. stepped on those steps. And it's a, Did you really? It's a, yeah. Well, he used to record here in the Twin Cities. He had a studio downtown St. Well, what's, what's now downtown St. Paul. And when he was on, I mean, that's where some of his uh, productions were recorded. So, yeah, these are, um, you know, you have to look no further for a man's man. There's one right yeah, here. Yeah, it know? challenges you to man up. Okay, so sure tell us does. a little bit more about what you're up yeah, to Yeah, you there. bet, you bet. Well, then also uh, across the street, but on the same campus, is uh, St. John Vianney College Seminary, which is one of the largest college seminaries in the United States. We just celebrated our 50th anniversary, uh, and uh, in those 50 years, we've, we've, uh, God has produced through us over 500 priests um, and, and well over 1,000 uh, alumni who have chosen our vocation, which is great because if, you know, if God's calling them to go on to major seminary or to become a priest, then we want to support that. But if God's calling them to a different vocation, well, we want to form them well so that they can carry out that vocation. So both seminaries are strong. Both seminaries are, are, are forming men. And, uh, and, and in fact, at the major seminary, we have some other programs uh, to form the lay people. But it's all geared to what you're saying, Bear. I mean, that, that intro with we're talking about St. Paul, talking about manning up, that's a good example, right? I mean, you know, when we go out and proclaim the gospel— there's not necessarily a threat these days of getting stoned. I mean, you know, or, or you know, be, being being martyred. Yes, there's 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 challenges, difficulties, but I mean, we, you know, we don't walk around with that fear every day. We have other fears, but that's a, a great intro and a great. A lot uh, of men, I, a lot of men I know are are, are facing and women that are facing yeah. issues at work where they make a, yeah. a certain stand and like uh, there's a doctor I know that is, you know will not will not provide tubal ligations and he's been basically. Yeah. His career, at least, has been martyred for almost a decade, although now it looks sure. like there's been some changes in that area. But he's yeah. had to travel all over the country to work, you know, because of, because of his stand on, on that. You know, the thing is, is, I think men forget that they're supposed to be dangerous. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. Mm-hmm. You better be a little bit afraid of God. Yeah, that's right. That's you know what right. I mean? I mean, like, he makes yeah. quasars and black holes, and yeah. uh, it, it is a certain awe and a certain respect of, of the truth. Yeah. Of God, and we forget that. But men also need to become dangerous again. There needs to yeah. be a certain solidity about them that uh, that there are certain lines that people can't cross. For example, just sitting at just sitting at coffee with your buddies, you yeah. know, I mean, at work, yeah. there are certain lines of conversation that just shouldn't be happening, and things like yeah. that. Right so, speech is important. No, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Tell me. We, we, we've abdicated that role as men in, in, in the church and stuff. We we we've let that for whatever reason fall to others and uh and i totally agree bear i totally agree well you know in the in the the thing you talked about is you said you're not educating priests you're forming men yes. and you mentioned to me uh earlier that you had about almost half or more of those who start seminary don't become priests that right. there's a but but there's a so to to make a decision to go to seminary isn't to make a decision to be a priest it's to go there to seek formation and mm-hmm. and, and get direction uh, you know, for your life. So it's, it's more than just, you know, a, a recruiting uh, center where you go in, you're going to go to boot camp, and then you're going to become in the military. But you, there's right. actually a discernment process. Can you explain that to me? What, sure, Like sure. someone uh, right now who's trying to discern. Abs- yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the college seminary is just that. It's a college seminary, and, and uh, it's undergrad. Uh, they get a philosophy de- degree. Um, but it's really cool because, like you were saying, they're there to discern if they're called to major seminary, you know, in the priesthood. And some of them, you know, some of these young guys, they've been serving mass since they've been four years old and they know, right. They're, they know uh, other guys, you know, they, they're one, two years into college before they, they feel that call. They, they hear that call from the Lord to even enter into college seminary. Uh, but for the most part, these are the college seminary. They're 18 to 22 year old men. And it's really cool bear. It's really cool. I'm so blessed to be, serving at one of the largest college seminaries in the country, because what I tell people is, uh, and it's true, these guys are, are not coming in to win a popularity contest right now. You know, they're coming in to serve. Oh, dude, that's so right, <laughs> isn't it? They're, the minute you tell people you're at a Catholic seminar, seminary, think about the, the yeah. uh, <laughs> they're swimming upstream, aren't they? They're like, really? What? And they're coming in to serve. And there's story after story, man. I mean, you're ever up in the Twin Cities. you got to come visit. Come to uh, Daily Mass at either of the seminaries. Well, I'll but see was, you. I'll see you soon. I'm going to be there. Well, we, we, will, yeah. we will schedule we'll something. We'll hook up. Yeah. Come. yeah. Uh, but when you come, you'll see. I was giving someone a tour of the college seminary building the other day. And uh, and we were up in the residence areas and and, uh, and and walking through. And we walked through, and there was there were two guys, two, two seminarians in a, in a single in a single room. 
no beds. You know, they didn't have beds. I said, guys, what do you do? And, and, and they said, well, t Soak. at the end of the day, we roll out our sleeping bags. And at the end of the night, we roll them back up on the floor. And they don't tell anybody about this. This is not something that's advertised, you know, and stuff like that. But how good is that for them? You know, that self-deprecation, that the, the, that, the aesthetic sort of aesthetic. Emphasis. Yeah. And how good is that for us, for the future of our church? I mean, if God's calling either one of those guys that I saw that day to be a priest, amen. If God's calling one of those guys to marry one of my daughters, amen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> amen. That's, wow. That's formation. So that's kind of a little backdrop and at the major seminary as well. It's just uh, uh, these guys, they, they, they want to show people what a holy, happy priest is, what a holy, happy man of God, and a strong man of God is. So what I tell people, Bear, is that these two seminaries and everyone who's involved with them, we've got a front row seat to the future of our church. Mm-hmm. Bear, let me tell you, the future looks bright. You know, I believe in our younger generation. Yeah, it's cool. I, I, I really do. I really do. And I, I think w- one of the things you said, I want to get back to it too, is sure. about how they get there and, they, and some of them may not continue as priests, but yep. they study philosophy during that first period yep. of formation. Yep. I, th- I think it's incredible that the Catholic Church has that emphasis that yeah. the very first thing you do is you learn to think. Yep. You learn to it. reason. Yeah. Uh, you don't jump off of some... Uh, some, you know, the, the scriptures, you know, the revelation of scriptures is so profound. It's so powerful that you better know how to handle that. You better yeah. be, because we've seen the scriptures used in a lot of destructive ways. Mm-hmm. So you better understand philosophy, philosophically, how to read and how to interpret, and how to That's understand right. what the nature of God is. Regardless of what God's calling them to do. I mean, we've got guys in our, in St. John Vianney College Seminary's 50 year history, guys that have gone to become lawyers, doctors, uh, you know, um, executives and corporations, uh, and, and most importantly, husbands and fathers, right? Mm-hmm. Most importantly, husbands and fathers. And that's great. And we've had, we've had, you know, some of the guys that don't go out, you know, choose the vocation of marriage, discern a vocation of marriage, their future wife will come back and thank the rector. <laughs> Amen. Know? Yeah. Thank you, you know, and stuff. For so the that's formation really a time that he had. We're yeah. talking to T- Tisok uh, Rosales. He's the director of advancement for, what are the name of the two seminaries? The St. Paul Seminary, St. Paul Major Seminary, and St. John Vianney College Seminary. Okay, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more of the uh, more of our uh, our co-adventure guide, T. Sok Rosales. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know we believe at. Uh, Deep Adventure Ministries, that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. You know, first of all, the word radical has a lot of meanings. Radical means the very fundamental basis of something. It means the root of something. Uh, a radical free agent uh, can, you know, is, is, is a chemical term. A radical is someone who wants to be revolutionary or change things. Uh, and we, you know, we as, as Christians and as Catholics, we need to be radical. We need to be something that uh, when people look at us and go, that's different. Those the Christians are different. They're different. What, what is it about them? And we need to challenge uh, society at its very core, at its very roots, uh, based on what? Based on uh, the traditional uh, understanding of natural law, the traditional understanding of absolute moral values, uh, the traditional understanding of doctrine. And the beautiful thing of the Catholic Church is that right now in the younger generation, so many seem to be atheists. Um, with, within the Catholic Church, there is not just an intersection between faith and reason. There's an integration, because uh, that's what it takes to have a totally integrated man, is the integration of his body, his soul, and his spirit to understand what truth is at the very core of its being, which is a person, Jesus Christ, but that all truth is a reflection of Jesus. And so this younger generation that has been uh, kind of brainwashed into uh, saying that God doesn't exist, is beginning to find out that the emperor is not wearing any clothes, that maybe there's something other than just a spaghetti monster in the sky. Maybe there really is a personal God who created him, who infused him with their own uh, unique spiritual, rational soul and with its own skill set and abilities and inclinations uh, that has an upward yearning for God, that God wants it to, has, a, has a way for you to find meaning and fulfillment and happiness. And that happens when you abandon yourself to God's will. And we're talking with uh, Tiso Rosales, who's the Director of Advancement at... You have to tell me the exact names of the two seminaries, Tiso, <laughs> so I make sh- sure and get them right. That's right. 
the St. Paul Seminary. Okay, mm-hmm. that's the major seminary, and St. John Vianney College Seminary. Those two seminaries have been St. Paul, Minnesota. That's just so cool. And you know, I, I may I may just get a chance to meet you because I'll be there. I think in about two months from today, we're shooting Great. a long ride home, and uh, we're going to end up in Minneapolis, in White, we'll, White we'll Bear Lake area. So, oh yeah, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. So, what do you think? What do you think about you're involved in, in seeing yeah. what this formation of young men? What yeah. what words would you have to the to that generation right now? Uh, you, you know. See? What what I see to that generation, um, you know, they have lived through some things and they've seen some things uh, that cause them to pause, you know, that cause them to question. I mean, uh, that cause them to, uh, you know, whether it be Enron, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 September 11th. I mean, you name it, you know, these these young men have seen some of the some of the constructs, some of the some of the institutions, some of the. you know, things that were that were historically stable, uh, kind of, you know, it, they're, since they're rooted in secular principles, they've seen them fall away, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and stuff. So I, I really have a lot of hope. And just seeing the young men that are coming in and seeing the guys that are that are giving themselves over to the Lord, you know, that, that are saying, yes, I want to discern what God's will is for my life. And, and, they, and they go through a process. Uh, you know, at, at the college seminary, um, the, the rector and his formation staff, they're excellent. They're real, happy, holy priests, you know, um, and, and, and there's a process. And that process is fourfold. Uh, it's first healing, you know. I, I mean, the, the, we all are sinful and we all need healing. And that's the first step, you know, uh, whether they come from a broken family or, or whatever it is, you know, there's a healing process. Uh, the second step uh, is, is self-awareness. And then the third is an openness to God's will. And then finally, discernment. And if a young man comes in and goes through that four-step process, uh, and, and he discerns that he's called to major seminary and to the priesthood, that's wonderful. If a young man comes in and goes through that four-step process, and he discerns he's called to our vocation, the vocation of marriage, that's wonderful, because that's what we want him to, to, to realize. So your question, what do I tell uh, you know, young men is stay the course and, and stick to the things like you were talking about that are true and beautiful. You know, uh, our, our Catholic faith is so rich, so many, so many tools, so many, um, you know, God did this all on purpose. And, and it's and it's our humanity that we say, uh, no, thanks. I've got a better plan. You know, <laughs> no, thanks. Mm-hmm. I can do this. And as men, we, we feel that because we're wired a certain way to want to take it on and write. And you, you're lead into the show. You talked about how, you know, um, career and all that stuff. And, 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 and that's great. And there's nothing wrong with being successful. There's nothing wrong with, you know, all that stuff. But a lot of times we focus more on that than, like you said, our family and what our role is in that family. And sometimes, Bear, and you know this, I mean, you've talked to a lot of guys and you're, you're, you're out there. Um, we take the provider role and we, we, we place that as a priority over the spiritual shepherd of our family. You know, we say, oh, I'm out there and I, you know, this is, this is for the family. Yeah, sure. And that's great. And I've got nothing against success and even wealth. I mean, that's great. If God's calling that for, for a man, wonderful. If he uses it for God's purposes, something like that. But a lot of us, and, and you know, I've got over 18 years in corporate America before I started working, you know, for, for, uh, mm-hmm. in ministry, chasing something that, again, has got secular foundations, you know, and, and there's there's great Catholic men and great Catholic you know uh, husbands and fathers in corporate America. I got nothing nothing uh, you know nothing against them, but it's when they prioritize that or, or or place that as a god over what their role is in the family to help their you know get themselves and help their wives and their children to get to heaven. You know then then we've got then we've got issues. You know then we've got issues. Well, t- let's talk about that whole that progression in your own personal life. <laughs> sure, sure. No, but sure. I, I I agree with you completely. There there's, yeah, there's, there there yeah. is a role for work, and it's great, and and you should be successful. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You absolutely should be successful. You should seek excellence in everything that you do. Yes. But yes. there's that balance in 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 life of of I, I have a, I have a successful business. I mean, I just had a conversation with my my wife two days ago. Yep. You know, I'm a CPA. I, I have mm-hmm. a, a CPA firm that. Uh, uh, I guess it's not. I've sold most of it off now, but I still sure. have my CPA practice. Yep. My ministry is exploding. Yeah. And I, so I, I begin to talk with her about how I'm going to trim this back and this back and this back mm-hmm. so that I have time to invest in our, in our, to, so that it doesn't get, it's, it, it can't be a runaway horse. Yeah. You need, it needs to be bridled. And so whether it's your work or especially those in ministry, 
Yeah. You can really let that take over your life and you realize, well, I'm doing it for the Lord. For Jesus, yeah. Yeah, but you're destroying your marriage. And so I talk, so we'd have periodic conversations and I said, I realized these two or three new things that I thought I should do, they're good yeah. things, but they're not yeah. God's things, Ooh. at least not at this timing. And I cut that back. There's a for wise the sake man of our marriage. In, yeah, you oh, amen. Way to go, Bear. There's a wise man in my life who said, as Catholics and as you know, as as as, as aspiring good Catholic men, we say no to a lot of good things, <laughs> you know? Uh, because we need to say yes to what God has given us, our wives and our children and getting them to heaven. Yeah. Yeah, sure. No, my uh my it's interesting. God um you know, he's funny. He's got a sense of humor. He, uh, uh, my, my father's from Mexico, uh, the part of Mexico where the Aztecs were, are, were indigenous. Now, where, now where is that? Where is that? What part of Mexico uh, is that? San Luis Potosi, which is just about a hundred miles Northeast of Mexico city. Okay. Uh, so where, right yeah, there. Okay. Yeah. That's where he was born and, 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 and raised and stuff like that. So, uh, um, and, 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 and so when I was born, my parents were really involved uh, in in the Hispanic community, uh, you know, in the United States, you know, and stuff, and uh, and and they named me Tisok. Tisok is an Aztec Indian name. In fact, it was the name of an Aztec warrior. And my, my the guys in my mm. men's group, my fr- my friends tease me. They're like, "Okay, warrior, bring it," <laughs> you know. Yeah, but that's uh, right. You were aptly I, named. Yeah, well, I think so. And I'm still kind of unpacking and uncovering, you know, what all that means. And uh, but um, and so yeah, so so. Uh, and, 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 and God knows what he's doing, right? He gave me that name, and, and we all know the story of Our Lady Guadalupe, of course, right? Uh, and, and the story goes that St. That, that Juan Diego had an Aztec friend named Tisok, which is really interesting because Our Lady has been taking care of me longer than I even realized. You know, I mean, at certain points in your life, you know, Barry, you do this, you look back and you say, okay, what was that about? You look back, what was this about? Yeah, Where exactly. Did, you know? Well, yeah. Yeah. And and, uh, and I can look back and see, I mean, from the name of my kindergarten, you know, uh, you know, Annunciation from mm. the church that my parents just, you know, raised us in Our Lady of Guadalupe to the name mm. of my college, you know, University of Notre Dame. I mean, mm. uh, there's a theme there, right? Yeah, uh, so, and, <laughs> so, and, so and, and, and at the time, you're not thinking, oh, OK, this is this is on purpose. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. this is. Um, but but anyway, so, yeah, so. Uh, my walk has been, has been interesting. You know, uh, I was, uh, uh, born to, 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 two cradle Catholics, but like I said, my father, you know, uh, he was, he was raised in Mexico and, and during a time where the government in Mexico, uh, portrayed the Catholic church, he went to public school and portrayed the Catholic church as a real oppressive institution. You know, there were, well, we all know the, the, the political, um, uh, you know, maneuvers there and stuff like that. So, so while he was a cradle Catholic, um, you know, he had this kind of like oppressive view of the church. Well, listen, we got to uh, take a quick break. Yeah, that sounds and good. I, and I don't want to interrupt that when we, no, once we okay. get started, but we'll talk more about it. Sounds this good. Is, this is Bear Wozniak. We're uh, talking with Tisok Rosales. He's the director of advancement for St. Paul Seminary and St. John Paul, St. John Vianney Seminary in the Twin Cities. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the, the uh, Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We are supposed to remind you guys to become subscribers to our YouTube site. It's just called Bear Wozniak. Uh, because when you do that, you get to see our, our guests and not just listen to them. And also, we got to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. And uh, you can, man, we got a website, website there that has my books and so many other great things uh, for you. We even have coffee cups and T-shirts for based on Long Ride Home. Uh, you can become a, a Patreon donor, and if you donate, I think it's a $25 a month level, you get all of Long Ride Home's uh, episodes for, ep- for season one, all of them for season two, and you get every single episode uh, as they are being edited. So you get the director's cut of, of every new episode. So season three is being edited right now. You would get that a year before it even airs on EWTN. Plus our radio shows, if you're a donor at that level, you get all of our radio shows about 10 weeks before they air, air, air on EWTN and in the YouTube version of it. So, And mainly the reason to give is to help us get this good news out uh, to challenge and equip and mobilize people in the new evangelization. So uh, that is why we have as our guest today, Tiso Rosales. Uh, he's the Director of Advancement for St. Paul Seminaries and St. John Vianney uh, Seminaries. And, and So welcome back to the show, Tiso. 
Thanks, Bear. You know, uh, Pete Sox, who runs our social media, he mm -hmm. was just uh, this morning uh, at prayer before the relics of St. John Vianney. So. Awesome. Awesome. Pretty, yeah, you were talking earlier before the break how you can see the Lord's kind of guiding you, especially through a significant way through with Mary. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's kind of cool that he was there. He just texted me before we started saying, hey, I just went to, uh, I was just praying before the relics of St. John Vianney. That's and cool. Pray, and prayed and lifted up the ministry. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So let, let's let's backtrack. By the way, were your, okay. pa your 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 grandparents? That wasn't during the Cristeros. That was in the that was in the late eighteen hundreds, wasn't it? The Cristeros right, movement. Right, 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 right. So, well, and yeah, but but it was that. It's interesting. Yeah, from you, 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 the from nineteen twenty seven until um, probably the early two thousands, uh, the same party though ran was in power in Mexico. The oppressive so, party you're saying that was exactly. that was oppressing the Cristeros. Yes, yes. So, so the same, the same. Uh, uh, they were in power for all those years. So, so it's, it would have been my parents or my dad, you know, and, and his parents growing up under that under that uh, that that reign, if you will, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of just the backdrop, the context, you know. And and, and my parents are wonderful, and they are you know great, you know, uh, Catholics, and, and they've done a, a great job. I, I owe them uh, my life, you know, and stuff. Um, although when I was born. You know, they were, they were, they were, they were, you know, children of the sixties and stuff like that. You know, they were, they were, and, uh, and they were kind of rebelling against some of the things in the Catholic church. And, uh, so, so actually I wasn't even baptized for the first couple of years of my life. And that's uh, so unlike a Latino family, right? <laughs> I know. Right. I know. So it was, I was baptized, uh, in fact, until I wasn't like three years old and it was in my grandmother's backyard by, by an, a former priest. And I thought, oh man, I mean, later on in life, I, I had to look back and say, Hey, is this okay? <laughs> and, and it's all good. It's all good. Um, but that was kind of the, the, the context. And then, and then my parents, you know, when I was young, they matured in their faith in the context of a, of a Christian, uh, an ecumenical Christian community. Um, and so I was exposed to the charismatic movement and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, and then I, I went to, went to elementary and, and grade school, Catholic school in the, in the seventies and eighties. Um, and it was the, you know, like many of us at that generation, we weren't catechized, you know, we weren't, we weren't catechized and everyone meant well, I know. And, and in later years, I come to find out that at that time, you know, the, the Catholic school thought, well, the parish, that's the parish's job. And the parish thought, well, you know, the parents are doing it. The parents thought, well, that's a school. And, and while everyone meant well, nobody was doing it. You know? yeah, I fell through that same crack, man. I was so Completely. hungry for the Lord. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. When, at the age of 19, I had a tremendous infusion of the Holy Spirit really? to the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. Huh. I was going to a Baptist university, and so the mm -hmm. people I knew were Sola Scriptura, Sola Fide, and after several years of, of really wanting to go deeper, the only path yeah. I saw was through uh, Protestant, the Protestant route. Sure. And thankfully, uh, my dad... My dad and my, my whole family had ex had that same experience of a charismatic mm -hmm. renewal. Mm -hmm. My dad and mom went deeper and became deacon. He became a deacon. Oh, cool. And he eventually he sent me Stephen Ray's book, Crossing the Tiber. And <laughs> once I read that, and I found the early church fathers, and I read Justin Martyr and uh, you know his prayer of the epiclesis yeah. uh, oh, uh, 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 for when the Eucharist is, is uh, sanctified, I came roaring back to the church because all I wanted was more. I wanted, yeah. the, I wanted the truth. I wanted to go yeah. deep. And yeah. I had felt for years, like I, I would say to myself, is that all there is? Uh, like I was swimming in the shallow end of the pool. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you find the Catholic Church and it's like a ferocious <laughs> hunger. My, I, I have volumes of books that I've read, volumes. I mean, bookshelves full of books yeah. that I've read since then and bookshelves yeah. that I bought books that I haven't <laughs> read yet. Right. So uh, those are all the ones I tell my wife, you got that for me for my birthday. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, tell me, so, so, so sure. yeah, so we were under catechized and yeah, and, you know, I mean, we go, you know, going to mass maybe once a month at school and, and I didn't know what the catechism was until embarrassingly later, you know, in life and stuff like that. So, um, but, but, but even in that context, it was, I, I remembered my, 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 both my grandmothers, uh, who both of them prayed the rosary every night. Mm -hmm. and, and that was, you know, even at a young age that there was something appealing you know, to that. There's something that was, like you were saying, that was drawing me. Like, well, what is that? What is that yeah, devotion? Mine too. Like, what was that? <laughs> what always that? praying the rosary. That? Always yeah. uttering under her breath the rosary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember grandma falling asleep at night and sitting on the floor just kind of, you yes! know. Yes! Yeah, was the yeah. same memory. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so, so it was there, right? I mean, it was there in the back, despite, you know, the, the time that you and I went to school and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, uh, and, and then I had a great gift uh, of, of meeting, uh, in college, my now wife. 
and 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 it gets it gets it gets pretty uh, it gets pretty interesting. Her her name means uh, hail like hail Mary. Her middle name is Mary Maria, and her her last name is Spanish for cross. So here I meet Hail Mary Cross. You know, mm-hmm. born on <laughs> the, the, December twelfth, the feast of Our Lady Guadalupe. Wow. So there's a there's a there's a thread here that God's been weaving, you know. And, and your like, grandmothers have been praying for you in heaven. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we know we know what's up with that. <laughs> we know what's up. We know what's up. Despite you know, like I say, going to you know public high school and seeing you know real secularized view of manhood and sexuality and and you know and just and just chasing all of that, um, you know, yeah, we we know what's up. And, and God God was at work despite this, and God has had so much mercy. Um, and then it was when I met my. Uh, you know, future mother-in-law. When I saw that devotion again, you know that my grandmother's had mm-hmm. to, you know, to to fir- their first Friday devotion to daily rosary, holy hours, and stuff like that. And I thought, oh, what it that's cool, you know, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. And and I want and wanted some of that. <clears throat> so you know, when a young man and, and when we got going right out of college, uh, my wife and I, and uh, you know, you're ready to take on the world, and here I am working for you know, in corporate America and got all things, you know, hey, I got my plan all figured out. Uh, just kind of motoring along, um, but but I wouldn't be as 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 guys say I wouldn't be have found uh, guilty of being a, a a good practicing Catholic in my in my work life. You know those were those are very compartmentalized. You were talking earlier about being integrated and stuff like that. It wasn't. You know it's what I did at home. It's what I did on Sundays. You know and before meals, but not. Not, not, not being a witness, you know, and I'm still trying to be a good, you know, trying to be a witness, but it really wasn't evident, you know, I wouldn't have been accused of being a good Catholic. They would, they would have been surprised, you know, oh really, <laughs> you know, or trying to be a good Catholic, right? But uh, it's interesting. Uh, one of the guys in my men's group, we were, we were we were on a trip together about a year and a half ago, and we had an opportunity to have a real heart to heart, you know, real man to man. And he asked me, uh, he said, T. Sok, he said, you know, when did you start taking things seriously? You know, mm-hmm. I, I know what he was talking about. You know, when did you really embrace God's plan for your life and, and, and living that out? You know, and I could tell you, it wasn't until our second child was born, my oldest son, that I was holding him. And I thought, man, if I keep doing this according to my plan, there's no way, you know, I mean, I am responsible for this, this young one. And, and my wife and I are blessed with six children. I'm responsible for all six of them, you know, to do everything I can to ensure they have a relationship with Jesus and are on a path towards heaven, right? That's my job, you know, and, and, and all the other stuff, career and everything. And uh, at the end of <laughs> at the end of my time, God's going to ask me, what did you do, Tiso? you know, with those that I gave you? What did you do? And Barry, you have a responsibility for everyone on the receiving end of that microphone and this and this thing. And we do, right? God's placed you and given you that role. And everyone watching and listening, we all have those different pools that we're swimming in. But like you said, we're called to, to, to go out into the deep. We're called to, you know, to, to, to tread in those deep waters because we all have this, this, this circle of, of friends, circle that, we're, that we, of men we have an influence on or, or, or that will listen. And what, are we, what do we do with that, right? You know, what do we do with that platform? So anyways, I don't want to get too far ahead. But um, yeah, so really, you know, my grandma's devotions and, and, and then my parents kind of, you know, uh, coming, you know, fully back integrated with the church and, and seeing their, their devotion and, and my, 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 my wife and her family, uh, and then having children, uh, finally started to, you know, at least put things in the right priority. You know, we're talking with Tisok Rosales. He's the director of advancement for the St. Paul seminaries and the St. John, John Vianney seminaries in St. Paul. Uh, we going to be back to talk a little bit more about that, that, uh, progression of uh, growth that the Lord brought you into deeper and deeper conversion. I particularly want to talk with you about Notre Dame, about Mary. <laughs> yeah, we bet. were just at Notre Dame Cathedral in, cool. in Paris about Ooh. two weeks ago. So, oh, And we're going to be at Notre Dame University in, a, in, a, in about a month. So, But we'll That's talk good. about that when we get back. This is the Bear Wozniak yeah. Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear. My uh, co-adventure guide today is Tisok Rosales. Be right back. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My adventure guide or co-adventure guide today is Tiso Rosales. Uh, he is the Director of Advancement for the St. Paul Seminary and for the St. John Vianney, Vianney Seminaries in St. Paul. And we're talking about uh, formation of young men in these seminaries. 
Uh, and we're, we're kind of doing that in a, in a way by realizing that everybody's life is a personal journey. And so we're going back and, and doing some backstory on Tisok himself and that kind of moment in time when it got real, when <laughs> he went from being a man who was a kind of a cultural Catholic to a man who suddenly it became very real. So can you pick up where you left off before that? Sure, break? sure. And, and, you know, it was, it was that moment that I remember, although the, the getting real was, wasn't as sudden as St. Paul's, more like a, an ongoing conversion, right? I mean, it's, it's a continual. But, yeah, you know, coming out of, uh, I mean, high school, actually, and, and, and in college, I had an internship with a financial services company. You know, their corporate office is, is in downtown St. Paul, and, 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 and the culture of the place really meshed with who I was and, you know, and stuff like that, and I uh, loved it. Um, and there were guys at the time, you know, this is, you know, years ago that, that had worked there for 20, 30, 40 years. And I love that loyalty and I love that longevity and stability. I thought, yeah, that's going to be me. And, uh, and, uh, and, and I, uh, you know, I, I had my plan right in this, in this, in this financial services company and, 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 and things lined up well, God was good to me. And, and some opportunities it happened where, you know, I, I knew, or I knew, I, you know, I, my plan was that at this age, I was going to be a this, this age of this, mm-hmm. and this age, retire of this, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and like we said before, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, and so, but things were, things were lining up. I mean, there were a couple of promotions and a couple of mentors that, that really, uh, lined that up really well. And I thought, here I go, man, I, I got it. And, uh, and I had a, I had a, a relative of mine worked for a, uh, a, a global manufacturer at, at the other side of town. And, and, uh, and it was a, a position that had accounts in Latin America and all of, all that kind of stuff and, and skill set and all that kind of stuff would have, would have been a great fit. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm a loyal guy and, you know, I've got my plan. And he said, no, I think you should really l- look into this. And so, so I, you know, at that time I was, like I say, beginning to, beginning to start to take the faith seriously. And so I had, had a couple of priest friends that I really loved and admired and trusted. And I went to them and they said, well, you know, um, you know, go on retreat and read these couple of books. And if you really think God's calling you to do it, you know, uh, uh, find out. So, so I made the switch to this, to this global, global insurance or global uh, manufacturer. And, and I had, I had, you know, I had the world by the tail, right? Again, not living, being an example of my faith in my work life. Um, uh, but, uh, but, but, but still, you know, pursuing, pursuing things that, uh, I wasn't quite listening to God yet, <laughs> you know, I wasn't quite listening, uh, to what you his, had him nicely his, compartmentalized. I had him nicely. Yeah, it was great. You know, I was like, Hey, I, you know, I got my God card here. <laughs> you know, nice, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's compartmentalized. Um, and I, and I, but we, my wife and I started to go to, to some, uh, to some events for Catholic organizations. And, and, and we went to, we went to one for a, for a, a, a national uh, camp, Catholic campus ministry organization called St. Paul's Outreach, and, and and we heard the young person give a testimony, and we were blown away. Mm. You know, I mean, I mean, tears were coming down my wife and I's eyes, and we were saying, "Oh my gosh, what can we do to ensure our children have this and our children's children and stuff like that?" You know, and uh, a, a long story short, uh, you know, I, I met the met the founder of that organization, and we hit it off. Um, you know, he had six kids, I had six kids. We were both wrestlers, you know, all that kind of oh, stuff. Oh yeah. And, yeah, you know, yeah, wow. and uh, and 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 uh, ended up being the national director of development for that for that organization, and so I had started to kind of you know listen to God's will, what He wanted with all this, right? Why did He prepare me with all the with, with these things, experiences, and skills? And it was really cool, Bear. It was really cool because then I had started to. Uh, you know, it was at that time that my wife and I, we, we had, we had begun to start homeschooling and all, you know, we started listening to God like, okay, this is what we, this is what we're, you guys are getting out of control. We're getting out of control. Right. But, but there was a <laughs> yeah, radical, of, radical. Oh, uh, you know, we thought T. Soak, the Aztec warrior was radical, but here we go. You know? Yeah. Right on. Uh, <laughs> um, but we felt a sense of peace. I mean, you know, no one's got everything figured out, but we thought, oh, this is mu- must be what it feels like when you're carrying out God's will for your life, you know? a certain yeah, sense of it's peace. something different isn't yeah, it yeah it's like, like okay. you know you know what you're supposed to do next you may not yeah. know the whole scheme right of things, yeah but you have a kind of certainty about when you put that step down the water you're not going to sink beneath the waves that's right that's and there's right. there's just this uh cert, there's a certainty that comes with that and there's yes. also kind of an excitement because Absolutely. when you're walking in the will and walking in god's will you can see god do stuff yeah and that was and that's what happened i mean and and so, so I'm doing this role for this organization, and, and, and there were many people that went before me, but, I mean, the, the organization was growing at a rapid pace, and, you know, I had all kinds of opportunities, you know, to be in relationship with the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs, tour the NFL headquarters in, in New York, and have, you know, George Weigel come and speak, and, you know, all wow. this kind of, I mean, it, was, it was awesome. I mean, it was great. I mean, you know, God was doing great stuff, 
And, and so, like you said, I mean, it was like, boom, OK, you're up to something. Uh, I'm still not sure what, you know, just like <laughs> corporate America. You, what? But but you're up to something. Um, so it was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time you know, with that organization and stuff like that. And uh, uh, then had a had a had a had a friend who made me aware of an opportunity at the seminaries. And and the priesthood has always been right here for me, right in my heart. You know, uh, you know, I, we, we all know that uh, that 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 we're going to need priests. Uh, you know, I need priests. Hear my confession uh, to 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 witness the marriages of our of our children, to baptize our grandchildren, you know, and to eventually bury our loved ones. Right? We need that. Uh, so so the, the working at the seminaries was the next logical step, uh, and, and I'm so blessed. So so as my as my faith life is kind of progressing, my my career is kind of almost almost starting starting to match that. I I still don't know what God's got in store. I mean, you know, he's he, he's right. in charge. You know, right. I just know that I'm not I'm not in charge. Uh, and it's and it's it's year by year, month by month. God puts different things, you know, in my life and and and, and the men around me um, that He's in control. You know, He's in control, and I got to listen to Him, and I got to listen to Him, and I got to do the things like you were talking about earlier, so that and so that I can man up, right? So that I can be, you know, not just a provider and not just you know uh, and stuff like that, but a true spiritual leader in my family, you know. And, and I got work to do, Bear. I got work. I'm telling you, you know. But but I know that this is my job. This is, you know, it's, it's to help my kids and everyone get to heaven. That's my, that's, that's number one, you know, mm-hmm. that's number one. So, so God's still at work, you know, God's still at work. And I, you know, I, I'm still, uh, you know, I thank God I, 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 I got more time to work this out, but, uh, but, it, but it's been a fun ride. And, you know, and you look back and I know in years from now, I'll look back and say, oh yeah, remember that time when Bear was neck and, you know, and stuff and how that mm-hmm. was, you know, uh, God was working even, even through this and, 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 and hopefully our viewers and our listeners, um, that, that God's working through your ministry and, and even your CPA practice, you know, that God's working. We're all Well, called. I'll tell you what, when you're, when you're in the business world, <laughs> yeah, I have more access to people's hearts than most priests do. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. if, uh, for people that are outside the, uh, outside the church for sure. Oh you yeah. Know, the good thing about priests is they do have the confessional. Yeah. You know, and a lot, but a lot of you know, like Protestant pastors are totally isolated from, from people. Yeah. They think they have access to them, but once you get off that pulpit and outside of the church, yeah. Uh, when you but when you're the guy who's repairing repairing uh, the, someone's truck for them, or you're the guy that has a has a business or is out in the workplace, mm-hmm. uh, that's your place of ministry. Um, Absolutely. People say, "Well, are you are you in full time ministry, Bear?" And I go, "Well, I've been in full time ministry since I was 19, and I gave my life to the Lord." Amen. I mean, I Amen. might have not. I, I worked for some big four CPA firms and things yeah. like that, but yeah. but I've been in full time ministry forever. And so the men, what would you say? You've got just a couple minutes to the man right now that wants to make a deeper he's in he's in business he's in the yeah. business world and, and that's where god wants him we'll probably keep yep. him but yeah. what 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 two or three steps can he take right now uh to go deeper with the lord sure well i'll, I'll just share with you what the some of the gifts that god has given me i mean you know I, you know uh there are many smarter and wiser you know people out there but uh one of the blessings god gave me uh recently is is, is a solid group of men you mm. know a, a men's group uh, that, you know, throughout my career, it, both in corporate America and, and, you know, for these Catholic organizations, I've run many men's ministries, run many men's groups. Uh, but it wasn't until relatively recently that God blessed me with a group of, uh, 11 men that were walking together. And I'm telling you, Bear, I'm telling you, this has been a game changer, you know, mm-hmm. cause we're all husbands and fathers. And some of these guys have, I mean, they have achieved success. I mean, rang the bell at the New York Stock Exchange, taking companies public. You know, one of the guys won a Super Bowl. Uh, I mean, there are, you know, professional speakers on the, you know, national level. One guy wins a marriage ministry. You know, I mean, these guys, they're they're walking the walk, right? Mm-hmm. And a, a lot of them have achieved a lot of secular success. But we all together, I mean, God put us together. C.S. Lewis has got a quote of, about this. I think it's in his book, The Four Loves, uh, about friendship. You know, and, and I'm not going to get it right exactly verbatim, but but the guys out there have read it, or if you want to read it, go find it. Um, it talks about friendship and how we think that we've chosen each other. You know, right. Bear, you, you know, you think that your you, your producer saw my bio and said, "Let's get him on." You know, we think that we it's our discriminating tastes and friends, but it's no, it's 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 it's, it's, it's something mentioned in a conversation. It's it's a topic you know brought up. It's a, it's a common you know choice of colleges or whatever it is. But there's a master orchestrator behind it all. Yeah, that's it's God putting us together for His purpose, and so that's so one thing. That's you know? that's about it. We got we're, we're running out of time, but I but I think uh, it's right, interesting yeah. that you focused on that because, yes, I think if you're a man and you're not involved in a men's group, 
uh, then you should find your way into one. It, that sometimes yeah. it's not that easy. If yeah. you don't have a, a men's uh, type of ministry in your church, then it's your fault. You should start one. Amen. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you can you go to Bear's website. Go to my deepadventure.com website, and you can join Bear's Man Cave. We have about we have men there that uh, share uh, posts. We challenge. We mobilize. We equip. Every two or three weeks, we have a Zoom video chat. We all get together, and then a lot of those men uh, have started their own their own man caves or their own small groups, and you know where where they live. So yeah, we need to. We, we can't be lone rangers. We need to nope. have a. We need to have community. Uh, Tisok, we are out of time. How can people find you if they want to want to reach out to you? Uh, you know, they can go on the website or seminary semssp.org. That's s e m s s p dot org. Semssp dot org uh, would be best way to take a look and. Uh, I'm on there, and you know, look me up. We can we have a conversation. It's just so cool, man. You actually <laughs> should listen to this, or you should actually watch this on our YouTube version because when you see T. Soak smile, you know that he's, uh, you know that he loves Jesus. God is uh, good. Yeah. Now, now, T. Soak, are you familiar with the saying "Viva Cristo Rey"? Viva Cristo Rey. Yes, and, what com- and, what, and what comes after that? Viva Cristo Rey. What There's comes a, something like- about the Our Lady of Guadalupe. Uh, uh, okay. I- well, do, let's do this because of your love for Mary and, uh, and yeah. your history. On long ride home. We yell out, uh, we shake hands, and we yell out, Viva Cristo Rey. You want to do that with me? Oh, Don't yell it? too loud. Uh, <laughs> I'll say it, and then you say it back. Viva Cristo Rey! Viva Cristo Rey! Amen. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.